Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be doing the first run through of an alignment on this radio. Um, now, just a couple things to say about it before I start. First, I still have a temporary capacitor installed underneath to replace temporarily the capacitor that has the coil on it. That capacitor is still in there, it's just only hooked up with one lead, so it's not doing anything, so it's just sitting down there. So my plan is to do the alignment, see if everything works out, then I'll pop the old capacitor back in, see if there's any difference. We'll try to figure out what this, you know, is this coil worth anything or not. That's number one. So number two, uh, just in getting ready here, I noticed that the outside plate on the capacitor uh, has been bent all the way out to where it pretty much strikes the uh, frame of the capacitor there. You can, you can see it in the camera quite clearly. So now uh, it's quite common for these plates to be bent out a little bit. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why they have splits on the outside parts of the uh, of the plates. The outside plates are split, so you can bend a bit, uh, a, a section, a little bit, and make a final adjustment with it. Believe it or not, that's so. That's I'm going to bend that back in right now. Now often these get bent in because people don't know what they're doing. They reach into the radio with their hand and they get a hold of this and the next thing you know they bend a plate or a bunch of plates right in. But that's not what's happened here. Okay, and of course this will affect the uh, tuning of the radio a bit but uh, that's what the alignment's all about. So I don't think there's anything shorting now. Looks pretty good actually. I find it quite amazing, in fact, that you can have these plates meshing so closely to these other plates, uh, all these radios, and uh, they don't have shorts. Oh. I see another short. Isn't that something? Okay, I've got to change cameras to see this one. <laughs> really? I, really? Who would have believed this? Wow, just, just luck that I would see it too. So where we're looking, I'll fix the focus in a second as soon as I get things set up. We're looking right down in here. Let's see if I get it just a little better focus on that. Where are we looking again? Right, right down in there. Well, not from this distance. Let's get up a little closer. Um, maybe this isn't a short. I mean, it's, it'd be really kind of surprising to find shorts in something like this. Okay, so uh, this odd little, it's not an odd bracket. That, that's actually the bracket that's holding the plates down at the bottom there. It's sticking out here. And right beside it is this ground lead right here. Can you see this on camera? Yeah, I guess you, well, yeah, you can see it quite clearly. And they seem to be bumping into each other right at that spot there. Let me tune the radio a bit here. Wow, you know, if they're not touching, they are coming within a molecule of... It actually looks looks like the wire has been worn away by the... <laughs> like it's been like that all along, and just from playing it and going back and forth, it's kind of dug out a little path there. Isn't that crazy? Oh, that's a really stiff piece of wire there. Holy smoke. That's braid with solder on it. Oh, wow. That's as stiff as can be. Now, this is a job for... Unfortunately, the camera's right where my tool wants to go here. Did I bend the plate at all? Did, did I bend that wire at all? I don't think you even bent the wire at all. Okay, hang on here. There we go. Okay, so now it's definitely not going to touch in there. Wow, any other weirdness going on with this capacitor before I start? You can still see this plate is still bent way out. I'm going to assume it got out there because somebody knew what they were doing and put it out there on purpose. Okay. 
Okay. I think we're <laughs> now I got another thing to show you before we get going here. So this thing has this battery switch. So in, when you're gonna operate it on batteries, you can't plug it in. This is the problem with these radios, I guess. You could have them switch to run on batteries and then plug them in. And I'm guessing that would be a huge disaster. So the designers of the radio have taken steps to ensure that can't happen. And here's, it's an administrative solution for all you management people. This right here. I didn't notice this earlier. To operate this radio on AC or DC, place cord in slot in edge of door. That's this slot. Hold the cord in slot, close the cabinet door, and plug cord into receptacle. To operate on battery, back must be closed with entire cord inside cabinet. So the plunger, uh, back over here, this plunger, ends up being pushed by this piece right here. And you have the cord sticking out of the radio like this. The plunger is displaced and can't, or this, this, this lever is displaced, it can't push the plunger anymore. So as long as the cord is sticking out, and that's why the instruction is so strong, the entire cord must be back in the radio. Because what people would tend to do, of course, kind of leave it looped around here somehow. They put the entire cord back in the radio. There's nothing in the slot. That ends up there. When you close this door, that then pushes the plunger and sets it up for uh, and then and four, 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 four. And look at this. Okay, so I just noticed these. I didn't notice these terminals before with a capacitor on it. Those are clearly the terminals for loop antenna in here. Now here's here's another piece. I'm about to align this radio. The alignment instructions say align the radio in the cabinet. So my thinking on that is, well, they want the regular antenna connected to the radio, of course, to align it. You can't, it doesn't make sense to align the radio without all of its parts connected. And the antenna in this radio is a part, it's a loop. It's an important part. But in the alignment instructions, the last instruction is reconnect the antenna. That's the last instruction. So the alignment is done without the in-cabinet antenna. So now I'm wondering, so why align it again in the cabinet? There's some pretty large pieces of metal in the cabinet. There's, there's this grill. This is a copper sheet. Pretty sure it's all copper. There's this, so you know, uh, and is this, how is this, is this grounded? I don't think it's grounded back to the radio anyway. It's just sitting in there, I think. Can't see anything obvious. So, you know, maybe that's why they want it done in the radio but, or in the cabinet. So I'm not going to do it in the cabinet because I'm only doing an initial alignment right now. Of course, the, the last reason, maybe the most obvious reason, the one I'm kind of ignoring is that you get the dial. If you don't have the pointer on the dial, you really can't do a final alignment on a radio like this. Okay. Now, I did say something about a marker. So that dot, see all the rest are dashed. Oh, no, 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 it's a dot. So I don't, I don't see a marker unless they are referring to this dot. You know what? This is a round dot. This is a square dot, square dot. So, so these are the markings. So this must be like 60, 650, 7, 750. And this round dot is the marker. Just below, a little ways below 550. That'd be 550, 60, 70, 85. So that looks like about 530 is what it really looks like. And that's the very bottom of the AM band. So that, that's the place to set up the pointer, et cetera, et cetera, which I can't do. But I am just trying to get this radio uh, performing well. I don't care about dial accuracy right now and I've got it all hooked up here uh, did I turn it on? I haven't turned it on yet let's turn it on there it goes okay, you're going to have to let it warm up for a little bit before I get going on it let's just let's just hear some sound and then I'm going to go uh, go off for a few minutes otherwise I have my other equipment uh, ready to go I've got the signal generator going here 
and that's the frequency it's going on. 1390 right now. You can hear the radio come to life. What is that musical note that it plays? It definitely comes out of the speaker. So we're going to let it just sit here and hum for a bit. And uh, maybe I should make sure this guy's working here. Too many troubles with that really nice meter there. There we are. Good. Just let her all sit here for a bit. Okay, let's disconnect the antenna here. We won't hear that noise so much anymore and now I have to put a dummy antenna on according to the instructions. We're going to take a look at the instructions in just a second. This in fact serves that purpose to a fair degree. The instructions are calling for a 200 Picofarad capacitor, yeah, capacitor. Oh man, my cat's out there already. Holy smokes. As soon as I start. There he is. Okay. Now. So what I've got going here, I've got this meter hooked up to the speaker, speaker, uh, to the output of the, out, of the output transformer. warm already and um, the IF frequency is 265 I'm pretty sure even though I think I mentioned before that uh, uh, or I think I showed you that on one of the schematics it suggests it's 455 no so we should uh, hear this come to light as I go past 265 165. That's not right. Wow, nothing at 265. Wow. Wow. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, well, then you know what? Let's go to 455 and just see what happens here. thing at 470 or wherever it was it was really quite strong compared to the other ones of course I, 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 uh, I turned up the volume just a touch here on the radio uh, hello hello what's up cat you know what peanut you know what the temperature is you know what the temperature is outside today peanut it's minus 17 outside what do you think of that? Okay, no answer at all. I, I, I know what he thinks of that. If, if, I, if he goes to the door and I open the door and the blast of cold air comes in, he sort of squints and then walks away dejected. So I, I, I know what you're going to do. Oh, okay. So 455 or 265? Let's look at the relative strength of the signals I can get through the IF. Uh, pumped in through the antenna. Is that really what this is saying? Pump it in through the antenna? Let me just read the fine print here. Uh, 
low side to chassis, high side to external antenna lead. That's exactly what I've done. Dummy antenna, 200 uh, picofarads. I didn't put that in. Signal generator, 265. <laughs> um, maybe the way to figure this out is to uh, measure the frequency of the local oscillator in here, and, and that'll settle it. The local oscillator will be designed to either run at 265 above or 455 above. So why don't we take a look at where the local oscillator is running in this radio. Okay, that's a good idea. It's going to take me a minute to get that ready. Okay, so you're looking at the uh, uh, output of my, or the spectral display of my SDR radio, cheap little SDR radio. Um, and uh, let's see, I'm going to tune the radio a bit. Oh, wait a sec. I gotta put this, uh, my pickup coil somewhere sensitive. I'm gonna take a wild guess. Just about anywhere is gonna be sensitive. Let's just stick it right there. Now tune the radio a bit and something should wiggle back and forth. There it is. So you see that thing going back and forth right around 12. That's the local oscillator. So now, uh, now I don't have the radio dial to, uh, to look at, but I think I think hard here for just a minute. Put that around, put that this way, that way. I don't know. I don't <laughs> well, I can figure this out real easy. If I turn the radio dial this way, we're going up in frequency. Okay, so I'm gonna go down in frequency all the way to the bottom of the tuning range. Okay, so that's gonna put the radio at around there we that's kind of odd. What's, what, what, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you're not seeing this. What's odd is the uh, uh, volume control knob interferes with the slider when the slider is over all the way. So, so there it is, over all the way. Now, the radio is tuned to, assumably, 500 kilohertz. The oscillator is running at just under 800. That's 300. That's 265. So the IF is 265 in this radio. Not 455. Somebody can make a big mistake. <laughs> they, 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 somebody can really do something weird to this radio. I don't know if you could tune those coils high enough for 455 to peak. I, I doubt it very, very much. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's carry on now. We know what the story is here. Uh, and uh, let's flip back. Okay, so this is where the pickup coil was shoved. I, I just shoved it down, just in a space. It's not you know, trying not to touch any anything serious. <laughs> just a coil here. So there we are. 265 is the name of the game. Okay, so if 265 is the winner, it's hard to see my numbers up here. Let's. Let's dial down to, let's dial up to 265. I'm going down first. Just out of curiosity. Okay, going up. There's a whole bunch of birdies in this thing. There's one. 170. Two hundred. Peanut, you're throwing us off. Maybe his food bowl's empty. Something at 240. Something at two. There, there's the tone. Looks like it's set to 255. That's what it looks like. Poorly done at 255. That's the impression I'm left with. You don't think so? There sure was a powerful reaction around 455, so I really wonder if somebody hasn't done something to strain this radio into 455. We just peek on the other meter for a sec, or the other camera here. Just on that note, if you look at the 
screw heights inside here. They're all kind of down where you would expect them, except this one's up pretty high. And it suggests somebody may have turned this to its limit. I don't know. So now, if this radio is really out of whack, if it's really... Oh, cat, please. Oh, he's just staring at me here, crying out loud. How can I continue when I've got this looking at me? Yeah, hey, look at me. That's right. So, what's up there, Peanut? You've come in to visit me today? What do you say? So he's looking towards the door, sort of. That's his way of saying he wants to go out, out of here, anyway. Where do you want to go? Where? Out? Oh, peanuts. Close your mouth, peanut. Well, he's, he's, you know, cats, cats, uh, cats understand persistence. <laughs> Just untangling my camera, camera wires there. Yeah. Cats understand persistence, just like little children. <laughs> I'm on to you, Peanut. Okay, so if we want to pick this guy up now at 265, it's just a matter of starting to turn these screws, regardless of what my cat might say. Let's just do it by ear here. I'm going to start with. I'm pretty sure this is the second transformer here. Well, sure, sure sounds like a something, doesn't it? What would happen if you put 455 through here and then try to adjust these for a peak? Yeah, they all they all seem to be right in the range of a peak. Just the, they're just peaking the wrong spot. Sometimes the IF can be knocked off on purpose by a repair guy to compensate for problems on the dial. It's a cheater way to bring the dial. Whoops! Bring the dial into alignment. Sure sounds terrible though, doesn't it? What's going on with the tuning? So the tuning, you know, there's way too much stuff coming in here. Maybe that's better. So I just got the plates wide open here. Okay, we're at uh, 255. We want to go up to 265. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to increase the uh, power here so we can still hear it and uh, roughly do this. Alignment. So I'm going to drive this uh, screw right through its whole length here. That's it there. This is nothing else happening except for one spot. So this was aligned reasonably well. It wasn't it wasn't way 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 out. something on the meter there. There we are. So I can hear the uh, distortion in the signal. That uh, hum interference. Hum
Is that because of that capacitor in the coil? Hard to believe. So that's, that's tuned up at uh, 264, 265. Uh, since I think this was already peaked just at 260 or 255, I can't imagine the performance of the radio has improved, but let's stick it on an antenna and find out what we hear. Let's do that. The garble is gone. Well, that did make quite a difference. That's that's pretty good. Okay, so a couple things. I'm going to clean this volume control at this point because we can't have a walk, wonky volume control and trust that meter. Do this with the radio operating. If I tip it up, what bad thing can happen? I don't know. Let's find out. I want to try spraying this. I got to flip the thing right over. Okay, you know what? Power off. I just can't bear to do that much. Malarkey. And with the power off. Okay, I can see right down in the control here. I'll give it a whack. That ought to do it. And while we're doing that, the tuning is very stiff on this radio. So I can feel the spring in the wire in the string, a spring in the string down here, see how I'm just doing this so now I can see these pulleys are moving a little bit what isn't moving I'm sure is the tuning capacitor where is the tune? oh you know what, it's on the wheel false test, false test, raise it up see it moving a bit. So it doesn't really matter. Let's flip it back. Over. I'm going to lubricate this in any case. Okay, so the ball bearings up in here. This point here. points here, there's actually a sliding contacts right in here. Just putting a little wee bit of junk on them. So another typical point of resistance in these things is actually this, this bearing down in here. Sure doesn't feel like there could be any resistance there. Well, this is a little better. You know what? That's better. It doesn't feel like it's fighting me anymore. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. I 
and these terminals are a little bit fragile here and uh, you know, if you break the transformer wire uh, that's bad news I don't want that to happen okay I think we're back in business this is okay you know what I might want to do with this now that I've thought about it I don't know it to be the case, but maybe there's some high voltages on the end of this thing. I hope not. I would think they would have it designed so that any uh, voltages developed in the radio when it's plugged in the wall don't appear on the end of this plug, that's for sure. I'm, I'm sure that's what they did, but well, I, mean, I just feel better. It's in the bag now. It's in the bag. Power on. Volume control is not wonky anymore, but it made that funny sound like a car horn. Okay, now the next things we're going to align here, the next step along the way is oh, preset A4 tight then adjust in order to given in order to given including A4 in order given oh 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 oh, 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 oh. okay wait a minute we may, we may not have we may not have done these exactly as we're supposed to yet I'm going to set while I sort through my reams and reams of paper that's not going to help is it Well, so this gives A numbers, and these are A numbers here. So just being sure now, A4, <laughs> this, this one, the first one I, I filled with, A4, A3, and then uh, A1 and 2. Oh, I got these backwards. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got the whole I got the whole thing mixed up in my head here. A4 would be the last screw you do. Let's get it right and we'll do it again. Let's get it right here. So it looks like I was wrong about which one of these is the first and second. This is the second. The order in which these are supposed to be adjusted on the sheet here is one, two, three, four. But before you do that, you take four and crank it all the way down. Really? That's really what they want you to do. Three, four is this one. Well, I'm just going to crank it down as it's standing here right now, and then we're going to hear. I mean, how far down can I go? Ah, there, there can't be anything good in this. Again, the, the instructions are written on the basis that the radio is starting way out of alignment. And, the, and with that in mind, there's a certain approach to help you zoom in on the alignment. If the radio is already aligned, which they all are, then maybe you don't have to follow the procedure quite so intently. Okay, I'm still happy with the alignment there. Sixteen hundred kilocycles, A five, adjust for maximum. So A five. This is going to go for a little while. It's going to take a little while to get this done. A five. A5 is this right here. Okay. So we switch now to 1600. Where's the pointer? 
Oh, what's happened? Oh my gosh, come on, really? There's the pointer. It slid off the end of the slider, got caught, and then I pulled the string through it. So it's no longer... Oh, oh. how could that have happened? Okay, hold on, before I get a shock, turn the radio off. marks here. I wonder if those are registration marks. What else would they be? So if the uh, alignment, if you're told, you're, not, you're never told to align it right at the very end. Aligning at 580. So you know this dot might be 580. then we would want the pointer to be further down yet. Okay, let's go on the assumption that those little holes mean something. And we'll go on the assumption that I've now lined up the pointer correctly. Oh boy. I had a complicated little pointer deal in there. The way they've done this is crazy complicated. For a pointer. Okay, I don't know what happened. I'll have to watch whenever I dial it down to the far end. If I've corrected the position of the pointer, it shouldn't fall off. The uh, shouldn't fall off the end. Okay. So no. Okay, I'm going to change this a little bit because it's just a little bit too wonky. Okay, uh, radio back on. Still feeding the signal into the antenna, that's where we want it. This is really the first radio I've ever done where when I have a small restriction in the AC power it deadens the radio right out like you wouldn't even think it's on. One of the only, it is the only. Okay, 1600. I'm watching now to make sure it doesn't go off the end. No, it's a long ways from the end. It's not far from the end of the slider, right behind here. Sixteen hundred if the registration mark, which I can now barely see, would be right there. Can we guess this is sixteen hundred? Let's find out. Got a pretty moderately strong signal there. Well, I didn't hear much. Okay. Oh, I think the reason could be I don't have the uh, signal generator plugged in, in fact. Okay. Cut the signal back a bit. 16. 
That's 1480. 1480. Wow. So there's no way that should be 1480. Uh, the capacitor is open. I can't. I can't get it anymore open. So this is a like 18 miles out. And look at this. Yes. Look. Look at that. <laughs> Here, we'll take a look with this. Yeah, there you can see. See how open this thing is? It's it's open a lot. That kind of thing indicates that something else is way out of whack, and this is trying to compensate for the whack outedness. So we we. So this is at 14. So uh, let me just crank this down. Okay. Didn't make an awful lot of difference. Am I adjusting an oscillator here? I think so. Huh. Well, oh, this camera's not doing so good, is it? So I, I just cranked that screw down. We'll just see what difference it makes on the... Uh, reception here. Not a lot. This is an oscillator? No, I'm going the wrong way. So, that's not good. Um, that's not good at all. Ding, 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 bells are going off here left and right. Okay, gross mistakes I could be making. Am I at the wrong end of the dial? Have I turned it to 530 when I think I've turned it elsewhere? It's a confusing radio, though, the way they've got it arranged. So let's see. So for so it sets like this in the radio. 55, 55. The low end is down where I thought it was. The low end's down here. It's definitely tuned up. Okay, so am I... Am I is there somewhere else this comes in? Is that why this was bent out so far? Is another compensatory move? Okay, so a good thing we can do now, we revert back to the uh, SDR and once again examine the local oscillator. So, put my SDR pickup coil just in a spot here, like that. So, I think this radio is tuned to 1432 right now, based on the frequency of my uh, the signal generator there. Can you see it? 1432. So 1432, it's heavy arithmetic now, 1430 plus 265, oh my gosh, it's too, uh, it's too much for my little brain, 16 something, let's go take a look here and see what it is, okay, I'm going to wiggle the tuning dial a little bit and we should see where the local oscillator is. Okay, there it's 1700. Let's review. We're at 1700 local oscillator. The IF is 265. You subtract this ugly number 265 from 1700, you get 1435. 1435 is what's on, is, is the signal I'm sending. And the radio's receiving it. But the whole problem here is the dial pointer is currently pointing at 16, and there's there's no more room to go. So, so the local oscillator is like 18 miles out on this. What, what am I not getting right here? Anytime things are way out of whack, I always think uh, it's me who's out of whack. So I still have that capacitor disconnected. Could, could that be doing this? 
how, how could that do this? That can't possibly do this. So the capacitor I've left disconnected. Where are you? It's right in here. Well, I haven't. I just left the coil out of the circuit here. I haven't. I haven't. I put a different capacitor. So what is this associated with? This is associated with the signal coming right in. It's like a ground. It's like a trap. It's trying to trap some frequency here, or something, or anything below or anything above a certain frequency. Well, you know, this would have a resonance to it. It's not an adjustable capacitor. I don't know what they're doing here exactly. They're doing something. They're trying to let something through from the antenna. They're trying to short something out off the antenna, some frequency. I don't know. Okay. I don't see how this could affect the tuning point of the radio. How, how can it possibly do that? How could it possibly throw off a local oscillator? No, I can't see it. Yes, I just carry on with the alignment. Maybe there's another adjustment coming up. Not really. Hey, A5 comes up again. Just it's just going back and forth. You're just going with uh, one end of the band, other end, back and forth, back and forth. So how am I gonna get this guy to uh oscillate where it needs to. So again, I can look myself here. The oscillator is at 1700, but at the top of the band, with this at 1600, the oscillator should be 265 above that. 1865. So, you know, a defective component in the uh, oscillator circuit like a small capacitor or something of that sort. Wow, and this is this is the area that all these schematics kind of have a different view of how it's going. So you know to force compensate this situation, they could push the IF way off from 265. That'd be one way. That's going to end up with a dial all over the map. The dial will be accurate probably at one spot only. It must raise the oscillator frequency sufficiently. The oscillator is adjusted with this trimmer. And this trimmer is A5. I think that's what that says right there. Quick look here. A5, all right. It's all adding up to the same thing. Insufficient capacity there. There's A6 is in here too. Was A6 the very next one over? A5, A6. Where's that pointing? Oh, that's way down there. A6. A6 is right in there. I wonder if A6 would... Well, let's, let's try turning it and see if we can't move the oscillator around with it. We should be looking at the SDR when I do this. So we'll flip back to the SDR view here. 
Okay, local oscillator is up at 1700. I'm going to touch that screw, maybe it'll jump. Anything happen there? Now we're going to turn it. Yeah. I'm going to turn this and, and try to raise that upwards. About the end of the road there. The capacitor is quite loose here. Let's see. A little higher yet. It's supposed to be 1865, wasn't it? Let, let me move the SDR screen over here so we can see things a little better. Okay, we're looking right here now. We're at 1814. So I'm going to adjust the uh, A5 screw a little bit. See if we can get a little more movement out of it here. Oh yeah. Okay, you know what? These two gotta be done kinda in conjunction, I guess. I need a bigger screwdriver. Oh, oh don't, don't move. My coil's moving around. I don't want that to happen. Hold still, everybody. Oh, wrong way. Well, that's that looks pretty close to 1865, I'd say. Let's take a measurement of it here. Eighteen, so we're about 1860. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's put it where it's supposed to be. So I'm going back on the A6 one. That's the one that's down under the chassis there. See, it's not doing too much now. It's so loose. I'm going to tighten it up just a touch because it's, it's too loose. And try to compensate with the A5 one back. Pretty darn close now. Well, there we are. Okay. Let's recap now what I've got going here. So somehow I've managed to move the uh, local oscillator up into the range of where it should be, very, very close to where it should be. This capacitor is now in a what looks like a normal sort of setting to me. It's, it's fairly open. And the one down below is fairly open also. And the radio is tuned somewhere around. 1600. Okay, well, let's feed a 1600 signal into it. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm ignoring the signal generator signal, which was left behind at 1423. Okay, so that's pretty close now, but I, I hear that terrible interference there. But that, that's probably just something in the shop. But see, I don't know for sure that this is at 1600, and I won't know until I put it back in the cabinet and see the pointer against the dial. I like it, though. That slams 1600 right at the top. Right at the top. Somewhere here it's going to give the overall tuning range of the radio. Three power portable. It doesn't give the tuning range. Okay. So where are we at now? Now should I go back and fiddle with the IF some more? I'll make that the last thing I do uh, today is uh, re recheck the IF. Uh, get my meter going there. So we'll tune the radio back, uh, the signal generator back down to 265. Okay. Sorry I get in front of the camera. Everything goes crazy. So we're, we're tuned to two, 265 now. Uh, let's 
not doing anything, I think, because the signal level is so low. Let me turn it up. There we are. Now we hear it and we see it. We turn this to a quiet spot. Okay. This shouldn't have gotten any worse. It should, should just be pretty much the same. Just do a little more precisely this time. skill improvement here at this point. I may find myself doing this whole thing over again once it's back in the cabinet anyway, but at least I'll be familiar with the radio at that point. I just tuned it right down. Didn't I? Oh. is the number. Uh, then the last thing, well, one last thing, let's listen to it. Didn't exactly jump to life when I plugged the antenna in. Uh, it seemed to have a little more receptive power before uh, some of the last adjustments, but that could be because basically if you have, let's say, one of the first adjustments a little off, then you're going to tend to compensate for it in all the rest of the adjustments. And so as I'm bringing them back into proper alignment, things which were adjusted uh, in appropriately, appropriately, are now being, are, are, are now silencing the radio. So I think as I continue with the alignment process, the whole thing's going to come back. And, you know, look, one, two, three sections here. This should be a really, really good radio. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for watching, and uh, we just keep moving along.